Billy Graham made a famous statement. He said that historians will probably call our era the age of anxiety. Anxiety is a natural result of when our hopes are centered in anything short of God and his will for us. Now, he said that back in 1965. Almost 60 years ago, he said things can't get any worse. We're under so much pressure. Let me tell you, anxiety, stress, worry, they're still around. And not only was it bad then, it's been around for a long time. Anxiety, stress, and worry, they're nothing new. They look different from a biblical perspective than they do to a non-believing world. The Christian approach begins with our paying attention and focusing on what God has to say about the subject. God doesn't want you to be anxious. He doesn't want you to be stressed out. He doesn't want you to be worried all the time about what's going to happen, whether it's a big worry, a little worry, but he wants you to know that he's there with you. And at the same time, God knows you. And he realizes that anxiety is real, stress is real, and so is worry is part of our war world. So wh what does the Bible have to say about this? Psalms 94, 19, I think makes it really clear. He said, in the multitude of my anxieties, you're with me. Your comfort delights my soul. God recognizes that you're having these issues, but at the same time, he gives you comfort. He's with you, and that comfort says that it delights your soul, your soul, your mind, your will, and your emotion. And that's where all of the stress, the worry, and the anxiety takes place. Isaiah 26, 3 says, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you because he trusts in you. God wants you to know that no matter how bad things are around you, no matter what you're being feeling and what you're going through, that he can give you peace. So, what really is anxiety, stress, and worry? These are three feelings that make us tired and weighed down. You know, it's the kind of tiredness that a good night's sleep just doesn't help. You go to bed tired, <coughs> you wake up ha tired. Why? Because worry happens in the mind, and, and you just feel that stress happens in the body. That's why if they think there's something wrong with the heart, what do they do? They give you a stress test because they know that the stress <coughs> is affecting your body. But anxiety, well, that's different. That can happen both in your mind and in your body. Now, there's basically three different kinds of worry that we have that just push us down. First of it, and remember, worry happens in the mind. We worry about things that have already happened. Oh, did I make the right decision? Why did they do this? How is it going to affect me? What do they think? Yeah, we worry about the past. Can't do a thing about it, but we worry about it. Then we worry about things that are inevitably going to happen. Yeah, well, if you have a job, you have to go to work tomorrow, and so you worry about it sometimes. If, you have to, if you're staying home, oh, what am I going to fix for dinner? You know you've got to fix dinner. So you worry about that, things that you know will happen. And then the third thing is we worry about things that never will happen. And it, do you realize that 92% of our time is spent worrying about things that never will happen? We play these scenarios in our mind, and we get weighted down with them. We get bothered with them. We get tired because of thinking about things that just might maybe perhaps happen. And at the end of the day, they never do. And you're more tired from a day of worrying than you would have been from a day of working all day. Now, 
Anxiety is stress about the future uncertainties, those maybe things of life. It's characterized by mental agitation and an uneasiness, you know, something that you just sort of feel and you don't know why, but you, you just get a feeling that something's not quite right or something may happen. And it primarily has to do with what may happen in the future, either in the near future or in the distant future. You're not sure if it's going to happen, but it might. It, it, it might be a problem for you. It might be a problem for someone you know. You're, you're just not sure, and you don't even know if it will happen. And so that's what causes the anxiety. And anxiety is a form of fear. And we must realize it as such and deal with it. You see, perfect love casts out all fear. And so as we trust in God... And we know that he loves us enough that he will take care of us. Then we can eliminate our fear. So where did all of this anxiety come from? It goes way back to Genesis. Look in the Bible to Genesis chapter 3. And you'll see how <clears throat> that Adam and Eve rebelled against God. They decided they were going to do things their way and not his. What did God do? He moved them, removed them from the Garden of Eden. And all of a sudden, they lost their home. And for the first time, they were cast out into a world of sin, a world of sorrow. And they were no longer in God's presence, one-to-one, -one, face to face on a daily basis. They were in a world that they had never been exposed to. And for the first time, they faced three elements of, of anxiety. <clears throat> the first one is insecurity. A great reason to have anxiety. Insecurity. Something bad is going to happen. I mean, they'd already been kicked out of the garden. They now we're in a place that they had to grow their own food and those little animals you know that little lion and that big lion that they used to play with all the time and that gorilla they were no longer friends to them uh uh they were afraid for the first time and they didn't know what was going to happen. Before then, every day, like clockwork, they could count on it. God would come and they would have communion with him, fellowship with him, no longer. Insecurity. The second thing was helplessness. There's nothing I can do about it. They could not go back to that garden I mean, God had placed angels there with swords to protect them from going back. You see, when we sin, there are consequences to be paid. And with Adam and Eve, there certainly were. They lost their home. They lost their security. And now they're saying, there's nothing I can do about it. I cannot make it any better. I can't make the garden not have thorns. I can't make that hungry lion, my friend again. There's nothing I can do about it. And third thing was isolation. There's no one to help me. Certainly the animals weren't gonna help them. And God, they found a new relationship with him. Adam and Eve only had each other at that point. And God's relationship with them changed dramatically. He was there. They prayed to him. He answered them. But they no longer had that daily communion with him that they had had before. And they went through all of these feelings with anxiety. 
And emotionally, for us, these elements can cause just as much anxiety whether they are imagined or whether they're real. You see, insecurity is what they felt. They felt like something bad was going to happen. But really, God says, I'm going to keep you. He says, I'm really not going to leave you. You're going to be placed out in the garden. But... I will always be with you. Helplessness, God says, I am your helper. And look at the many ways that he did help them through that time. He gave them the wisdom and the knowledge. Even though they didn't have the beautiful Garden of Eden, how to prepare a home for their future. God did not leave them helpless. Isolation, they were not alone. God still talked to them. God still heard them. God still listened to them when they prayed. And so their anxiety in some ways was very real, but in other ways was very imagined. So we have to do a, decipher between the real and the imagination. So what are some reasons for anxiety in our world? Well, here's just two or three of them. One is that we live in a culture of fear. Our culture that we're living in inspires fear and makes us believe that we're the only one that can handle our problems. It wants to forget us to forget that God is in control and that he's capable of taking care of anything that we have. Psalm 34, 4 says, I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. Another reason is perfectionism, anxiety. And what happens then? Well, it's because we set unrealistic goals for ourselves. We set our goals so high that we can never attain them and we want to be perfect. And we try to do things that God never intended for us to do and neither does he expect us to do them and as a result what happens we don't do anything if i can't do it right i just won't do it if i can't do it perfect i i don't think i should try i'll just stop and so that hinders us but we have to realize that god has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and a sound mind. He wants us to be able to make decisions. He wants us to be able to go ahead and think about what we're going to do and to decide how to do it. He doesn't want you to measure, try to measure up to something that's impossible. And then we're living in uncertain times. Jesus is already aware of our needs. And he said, don't worry about tomorrow. He said, I, I'm, I can take care of everything. He said, you, you look at the lilies of the field, they don't spin. You look at the birds, he says, I, I've taken care of them. He says, if I can take care of these things, these flowers that decorate the weeds that grow along the highways. He says, if I can take care of that, I can take care of you. And he says, and if I can take care of the birds of the air, the thousands that we see in flight every season, we don't know their names. We can't even count them. Because says, I know them. And he says, if I take care of them and I see that they've got that built-in GPS and know where to find food when they need it and know how to build a home, he said, don't you know that I'll take care of you? God wants you to know that he loves you. And he said, you don't have to get all worried and full of anxiety and stressed out over things that I have already told you that I'll take care of. He says, I'll take care of you. And that's where we get our worry. That's where we get our anxiety. And that's where we get our stress. When we start thinking that we 
have to take care of everything. But he says, no, let me handle it. He says, I'm big enough to do it. And that's why even when we're living in this time, you know, he says that peace I leave with you, my peace is what I'm giving you. He says, and you don't have to worry. He says, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. God loves you today. And I know that many of you, you're, you're just worried about tomorrow and you're full of anxiety and you've got lots of cares. And you think, what am I going to do? I, I, I don't know how to handle this. Know that Jesus loves you. See, care and concern becomes another reason for our anxiety, another reason for our worry, another reason for our stress. And you think, well, isn't care and concern something good? It is, until you let it control you. You can care about someone to the point that not only do their cares overwhelm you, but in caring for them, you try to control them. And another thing that care does is it divides our attention. When the cares control us, we, we really can't focus on anything. When Jesus went to see Mary and Martha, Martha had this great dinner planned for him, and she was in the kitchen busy. It was her responsibility. She was a great cook, or he wouldn't have showed up. And she had a younger sister. The younger sister's name was Mary. And Mary, instead of being the good sister and being in the kitchen helping Martha, what did she do? She decided she wanted to hear Jesus. And she went and sat at Jesus' feet. And she listened to what Jesus had to say. Well, Martha, being the one responsible, tries to cook and tries to see what's going on in the living room. She goes back to the kitchen and tries to get something else done. Goes back to see what's in the kitchen and goes back and the biscuits burned. And I mean, she's just had it. She goes in and says, Jesus, tell Mary to get in here and help me. And what does Jesus say? He says, Martha, Martha, you're concerned about so many things. You're distracted. Stress has overcome you. You're worried about what's going to happen to the dinner. You've got anxiety because you think you're not going to be good enough, that the meal's not going to be right. He said, but Mary has chosen one, one thing. Mary has chosen the good part, one thing. And that's what God wants us to do. Jesus said, you know, when you feel like you're so distressed and burdened down and, and your mind is going here and here and, and you just can't stop it because you've got so much on you. And that so much on you can be something minor or it can be something serious that's been going on for a long time. But you get to the point, just like Martha with those burned biscuits, I can't take another thing. Jesus says, when you're tired, when you're weary, he said, that's when you come to me. And he says, and I will give you rest. I will give you rest for your mind, your will, for your emotions. He says, I'm going to rest your soul. And that's what he wants to do for you today. He wants you to know that he wants to give you rest. 
He wants you to be able to just rest in who he is and to understand he is pleased with you. He's not going to de put demands on you to be perfect. He's not going to make you take care of more than you can take care of. But recognize that he said, I'll not put more on you than you can bear. He's not going to expect you to do that. And if you're feeling the weight and the pressure of other people, of things, and even of your own self-expectation, turn them over to Jesus and say, Lord, I can't do it. I can't do it. And like Isaiah 40 says, they that wait upon the Lord will renew their strength. And that's what you need, is to have your inner strength renewed when you're going under anxiety, worry, and stress. Let me pray with you now. Father, you take care of the birds, and so I know you take care of us, your children. And Lord, I pray, Lord, for that one watching that they'll know that you care for them and that you love them and that as they rest in you, that you will give them the strength they need. Not just energy strength, but inner strength. You'll strengthen their mind, their will, and their emotions. And when that happens, then they're gonna find that their physical strength is also renewed. I ask that you'll help them to understand your great love for them. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, next time we'll continue talking about stress and we'll see just how it affected the prophet Elijah, how he dealt with it and lessons that we can learn from him.